Indoors, and has a back. Meet the artist. Meet for Christmas. Victoria Beckham. Which is amazing. She is absolutely fantastic. Watercolor, if anybody's looked at this. And she's going to give a little demo, which is amazing. Thank you very much. Well, I know there are many, many fine artists and watercolorists all in this room. And it's just something we all love to do. We like to paint. Uh, I started probably like everybody else. You drew as a kid, you grew up, you went That's to high right. school, you painted, you took art classes, uh, you continued in college. What I started with uh, in Suffolk County Community College and then went to Florida Atlantic University to continue my studies um, was etchings, zinc plates, uh, with the acid and the grime, you yep. browns, and you need the, 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 the uh, press, and it is. I have plates that I've carried around with me, some huge plates, wow. heavy, I mean, just wherever I moved to, those plates came with me. Unfortunately, I have not done anything with them in years, but if you'd like, this uh, picture was a hard ground, and then a soft ground, and I believe it was uh, a wax paper that I used. Really? Yes, to make that background. On a metal plate? On a metal plate, zinc plate. Mm -hmm. And then depending on where you put a cover, a ground on it, it's called, and it, you just scratch. scratch it off. Yes. And where that's removed, the acid eats in. So I did that. Um, I did a few oils. I'm not that great at it. Um, I did a few pastels for a while. I was doing a lot of portrait and pet portraits. And I took classes with Walter, uh, some pastel classes. And I thought I would bring that because I don't show this one. I just like it. I did this for uh, the Phoenix Gallery. I think they had a show called Fabulous Fakes. So on the back, oh, well, you, you can't see it, but it was a uh, picture done from a fob artist, and I just really thought it was cool, so I did that. But mostly for the last uh, eight years, I've been doing watercolors, primarily doing them full time and teaching classes, either in my home studio, which it was a detached carriage house garage filled with children's stuff, things that nobody has looked at, everything was thrown in there, you couldn't find anything if you wanted to. It was, it was. So everything was cleared out, uh, insulated, electric, heat, so, and light, so I, it's a nice space now to paint. And on Mondays I give watercolor classes there. Um, then I decided, oh, maybe I could do something. I want to keep active. It's not that I really need the money. It's, it's nice to have because that money I will use to mat something, frame something. It goes back into the work. Uh, last year, and uh, you can pass this around if you want, or just look at it, or whenever. Uh, I have, this is the third year that I teach watercolor and lunch at the Bayer Cutting Arboretum. Oh. So it's a uh, morning, we start at 10, we have like two, two and a half hours of painting, and then the Hidden Oak Cafe at the ha Manor House uh, provides us lunch. We have a selection to choose from, we can walk around, we can sit outside, whatever we would like to do. And I like to have it in different areas. Sometimes it's in the carriage house. We all know the carriage house from our shows. Uh, sometimes in the cow barn. I've been outside the barn, inside the barn. Uh, and then outside, we did one outside. We had tables and we were just by the water. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. Uh, and then painting, which I love to do. Can I, can I ask you a question? How did you get that venue, Victoria? How do you get to do that, that class at the Arboretum? Uh, the Natural the Heritage Arboretum. Trust, yes, uh, has uh, an educational program and they want to promote the arts more and more. Um, and 
So pretty much I met with them a few years ago, and I said, you know, I love the Arboretum. I've been there since I was a kid growing up. We played under the trees. I studied my homework uh, there with friends, and it's just a wonderful place to, uh, to feel and be. Uh, so I did. I approached them and I said, okay. And so then last year, Newsday picked it up, uh, Pallets in the Park, and this is my third year that I'm doing nice. We have a spring set, uh, series of classes, and then there's July and August, people go on vacation, it's not too much. And then there'll be a fall session scheduled to do. So it is, it's very nice. I'm very fortunate to have, to be able to paint there. Um, I also, they do have shows, you know, in the carriage house from other art organizations, and they have the annex. Do you know that they have an annex in the house that they are now using to, for shows? Um, yes, um, so, as part of Women Sharing Art, another group that I sit on the board, um, we are having a show there. It's called Arboretum Inspirations, and we have 21 of our members that are very multimedia artists. Uh, some do uh, jewelry, some do ceramics. It's not just, you know, like us. So we will be showing there uh, April and May. May 22nd, April 7th to May 22nd. And there's a bunch of rooms there that's a very nice setting to display artwork. And all the work will be something or a theme related to the Arboretum. That's something there. Uh, I did one picture, in fact it's on the postcard if you haven't seen it. Um, it's called Nelson's Window. It's a stained glass window. And I'm thinking, how would I do a stained glass window in watercolor? So, but I figured it out, and it does look like a stained glass window. Um, okay. Then, I do different things. It has to move me. Um, so this was a picture taken, and um, it wasn't snowing. It was raining, and very, very loose. Just, you know, loose. I do not water the back of my paper. I cannot start with water. And I, I don't wet my paper first before I start painting. If I need more water, I'll just add it to the paper as I go. But this is New York uh, City in winter. Uh, this was for a show called Passages. And uh, this is just pieces from uh, a big cathedral in Venice. So I didn't do the whole thing. I think so. Um, but I just liked the idea, and so I pretty much did my own, and then I softened it with uh, uh, white uh, gouache. Yes, just over it. In fact, I've done three pictures. I've sold two of them, and it's uh, a nice, simple scene, a boat. I took it from Wisconsin. It was a picture on one of the lakes in Wisconsin. And it was the morning fog. So here you have spent time painting a picture. And then to get this effect, I water down the uh, gouache, but you quickly have to paint over it. So it's like, oh my god, how could you do this? It's like ruining the picture. But you can, and you take your fake brush. And you, it's a very fast uh, medium to, that you have to work with. These you can pass around. I did, uh, they have to be framed, but these are two watercolors that I finished recently. So I'll just frame those. And primarily, these, other than thin lines and uh, you know some detail work, they were painted with that 99 cent Bristol brush. <laughs> so, um, I have some artwork, mostly I've given it away to the kids. And uh, I don't have a... 
Oh, maybe somebody, if I, or you have a pen or something, you can just rip that. Um, I've done some fanciful things, and I've done a, a few, these just, oh, amazingly, I don't know where my brain was sometimes, but, uh, the Iceland Arts Council uses this uh, for their jazz festival every year. So, and then we had a show there too, all that jazz, women sharing art. So, that. And the other one that I can't open was a poster that I did a number of years ago that was selected by the Long Island Two Day Walk for Breast Cancer. So, that was the one that I did. So, you know, and it's just little things. I'm trying to paint smaller, I tend to paint larger. Smaller. <laughs> Square. Square. Yes. <laughs> I know. Easier. So that's uh, pretty much what I do, and I love it. Just like all of you, you know, it's just relaxing. I take my time. Watercolor, you do have to have some patience because you can't always work on what you want to work on until the first layer dries. Or you can move on to another layer, but I'll do something or if I am using um, uh, some white out first I'll just leave it I go inside to the kitchen and I do something they, that's kind of colorful and weird too <laughs> fanciful it's actually I have a large one uh, a little bit more uh, detailed and more items in there and for some reason it was like uh, a dream and I call it Dancing of the Fish Catcher. <laughs> so, so uh, and it's just so you can see, I'm sort of all over, but I do kind of, you might want to see some other things, you can pass that around. And then I think I'm doing a series of fields and trees, so you might want to just pass that around as well. So, I thought it also would be nice to show you how I paint with this brush. Um, I do not care what side of the paper I use. I use both sides. I do not wet the paper. It's the cheapest 140 pound full press paper you can get on sale. Same thing with inks, uh, 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 paints rather. And brushes. I have all kinds of brushes and there's very few that I use. So, with that said, I'm going to just show you a simple landscape, my horizon line, and I want this to have uh, some kind of uh, water, you know, a lake, or a stream coming through it. Uh, this is one of the things uh, I demo in class that my students do. So. I don't draw everything. You really paint what you're going to be painting. So, my favorite sky is a simple this is a paper, uh, ultramarine blue. So I'm just mixing it really well. And so I do have a wet brush, and it's loaded with paint. And instead of taking that flat brush and trying to go line for line and you're making um, your wash, I just take this scruffy brush and if I need more water, I just add it. And it's going to give me a really nice sky. So, maybe this is but I'll go down to my, and, and leaving white spaces doesn't bother me. Uh, I like to see the pencil lines. I'll, I'll even draw some pencil lines in pictures. I can do it on this too. Uh, inks. And it will be a nice wash. And I'll give some texture, some different effects. And I'll probably, I'll, I won't do it all, but you can see, 
instead of doing that flat brush line and line and line, that always bothered me. Anyways, okay. Then, that might have to dry just a little bit, but I do want it to feather. it. When I do, um, like on some of these, you can't paint everything, you can't paint every petal, every leaf, so I give the impression of something. Um, and that's what I'll do with my foreground. And I'll use some different colors. Once your, your sky dries, you want to go back into it? <laughs> yes, before it completely dries, probably after I make some of these colors that I'm going to use, um, I'm going to put in a mountain. Okay, and, and I'm going to make it uh, sort of a pinkish purple. No. And I'll just take a dryer, a hair dryer. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I don't mind that at all. Yep. So what I would do, and I could just take, you know, the the easiest simple strokes, the, the strokes that, you know, you don't go over it and over it and paint like you do on some other things. This is wet enough so that it will feather and give me a uh, nice feather there. Take some of this off. So, but see, I've done that with just this brush <laughs> and it's so simple. And I just like to mix colors together. I run on my palette. At least I have them here. And I'll do the same for this. And again with watercolor, the white is your paper. We don't know that. We have to start light to dark. And so I'm going to have, a, and I don't mind leaving a white line uh, here. So, and I like to, you know, bring in different colors. Just gonna, I'm going to just mix them up. And it's pretty much. Because if this is going to be a area that is brush, scrub brush or whatever, or field, I don't have, I'm not going to, it's going to look like a field, because once I add something else and I splatter it, uh, and I add the trees and whatnot, you'll see that it's going to be a, a field. <coughs> And if I have too much of a color, or I want to take something out, I'll just scrub it with this brush. I really, really scrub it. I can also do thin lines with this brush, the tip of the brush. I don't mind with watercolor, you just get some really cool, happy mistakes. The water makes these uh, different images. So that if I get something and, uh, you know, what do you call them? The blooms. blooms. I, I like them. <laughs> so, um, I just think they just add blooms. to it. Blooms. Oh. And I don't mind using, you know, some pretty colors. Sometimes I will take and just put a a blue or something in here. Oh, oh, thank you. 
That's an original. Yeah, it's just. And I'm just going to keep it like that. So I have that. And, you know, if I splatter something now, it would, uh, if I don't like this, I can just lift it up. So there really are no mistakes. I kind of like that there. Uh, so, let's see. trying to do this fast so you get the idea that this brush clean it off now I do have to wait for some things to dry because I'm going to be putting in some areas if I wanted to darken this I would make sure that it was completely dry before I add the second layer of color on here um, if I wanted it to feather, it's gonna it's gonna give me a, a hard line which I wouldn't want. So if I just took a clean brush with water and went half on, half off, it would feather again for me. So here we have some nice like this, scrape it out. It's going to just add something. Can you see that? Great. Keep some of this. Okay. Now, if this is like uh, a field out in the desert or someplace where, in farmland, uh, so I'm going to put some trees going here, but this is uh, still wet. This is dry, but this is a kind of nice sky, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you don't have to be really, in fact, I, I was doing a picture and I was following my photograph. And it was a blue sky, but it had clouds. And I can do that very well if I do just the impression and when it's wet and I'll take, you know, paper towel, everybody does that, and leave some areas of clouds. Well, I'm trying to drop in and do detail, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. It wasn't like watercolor -y. So I, I think less is more when you do work with watercolors. You do have to go detail work, uh, obviously, but you can start off pretty loose. Um, I'm going to, I, I like quinacrone gold. I like that a lot. I like that color. Is that Daniel Smith? Hmm? Daniel Smith? Uh, uh, actually, the brand is whatever is on sale. <laughs> the cheapest. So it isn't, it's a combination of all different ones. But, uh, this and I like to you know do my colors this always gets me I want this but I don't want it do you change your water uh, yeah change I can change yeah. <laughs> no I don't need it okay. <laughs> I can brown this a little more by adding red to it all right, it, it's a good start uh, with some light colors. This is a very good, if I was to do a whole tree with, um, because of these uneven uh, bristles. bristles on my bristle brush, it's going to make good leaves, good uh, trees, 
good um, scrub brushes. Let's see. Let's do this. I'm just going to take this, and this might be too wet. And I'm going to put a bunch of trees along here. And I'm using this brush, and I'm just using the flat of the brush. So, um, and some of them will be taller. And uh, I might want something darker over here. that's enough for now. You know, it doesn't have to be where I do everything on this side, I have to do it on that side. The more uneven it is, the better. Uh, I will go in this darker, it's still a little wet, but I do need to add darks to it. Uh, but I can't do it. It's just going to that. I can wait for that to dry. Um, I don't think I used my, my rigger brush. I didn't. Primarily I use this. I will use a round. I will use a small flat because when I do barns, windows, I like that. But this will also on the dry side make really good barn wood marks uh, on that. So, I don't know. This, I should have brought some other stuff, but I didn't. Okay, I'm going to take my ultramarine blue, which is probably my favorite. And, oh, I splattered it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. And I dropped it. <laughs> to my tree. I can take it out. Sometimes my splatters are really good and sometimes they're bad. And I can, but I kind of like this down there. In fact, maybe I'll just move the trees a little bit more. I did that there, but I would do splatters, it gives like nice texture on here, I don't know. And just, I don't have the splatter thing down. That's always uh, a challenge for me, if you would think you would have it down. I hear I have an area I could... Did you ever use a toothbrush? Yes, that made better splatter. That's yeah. <laughs> so, but you see, it kind of comes together, and you don't have to worry. Like some of my students would be, oh my goodness, and I have to make a whole tree. <laughs> uh, but I kind of like it more and more. I mean, sometimes it's realistic, but other times it's the impression of what is going on there. And you have to go back, and you're just gonna you know, maybe brown some areas. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but you get the idea. 
um, with the same brush, if I add some blue to this brown that I have, I'm going to darken it a little. And I could just give a little marks along the edge here. Maybe. Usually I use a bigger brush, which is a smaller round than this brush. And my trees are going to be, some of them will be blue, blue-brown, black. They're not all the same. I really should have brought that on the picture. I'm thinking. And it's just... A few. Let's make this grouping a little better. Um, hash marks. things here and there. Big branch. I don't know. Just make it different. Mix it up. I could also... I usually paint flat. Uh, it could be... Could be just scrub, you know, stuff around here. The trees don't always have to have the green. It could be just dry and I would go back with this. I would give the some more detail around the water's edge and for the stream I wouldn't do too much with it. You know, I might start off a little something more here. But you know don't need very much. Look at it. See? All with this brush. <laughs> <laughs> Made it look so easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll get some something to eat and then come back and then. Oh, and do some more details? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like that. We can put things. <clears throat> Maybe you should sell brushes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You got a different kind of watercolor painting thing now. This, like the this is a pastel. Oh, that's a I pastel. I brought that because I, I did some etchings yes, and right. I did it's pastels with yeah. wall, uh, Walter. Very light, different. Different. And this was, I don't know if you remember the oh, yeah, yeah. show at the yeah, Phoenix I Gallery remember. called Fabulous Fakes. Yeah. yeah, that was about yeah, that. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Seven, eight years ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Is that the one on Irish Lane or something like that? No, it was here. Oh. No, it was oh, in the store. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. It was in Belfort. <laughs> okay. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, and I'll clean my palate and um, get some fresh water. <laughs> yeah. of sailboats mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so I turn it around and I do a much better straight line this way yeah. so let's turn it around mm -hmm. I have some of these leaves and a rigger brush these lines would be uh, thinner and some of them are bushes some of them are trees Some branches turning over could have a variation and they're just little hash marks and they're spaced differently they're not all the same and of course as it goes back you get smaller but it's more interesting if they're not the same direction not the same 
Just you see, mm -hmm. instead of having the pens like this <coughs> down, um, it's somebody, um, so you should try to fit something in the background here. Uh, I messed this up, but it's not going to be messed up for long. <laughs> because I can just bring it into the nice. All right, let's see what I can do here. One thing, if I had my tape with me, something that you can do that's kind of cool too, is you can cut little shapes of your tape and you could put it in. Like, here's a white spot, so I might use this as a roof or something. But you can use it, you know, and just take it off when you're going to do some detail. But let's say this is going to be... I don't know, you could do something with that. And I would need some purple now that I did that. I messed up my purple there. It's not going to be the same. I can see my purple. I'm going to help you someday. I'm doing this kind of fast. I'm going to get to this. But then I would take. Like the, 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 Case out and I'll put one in there. I would. Yeah. Oh, those cases for more. I have 40 of them. I'm sure I this more yeah. shape. I would have to blend this. Well, my briefcases are going to carry around one. Indicate, you know, with a little mark, something that's going on. <coughs> and I think I want some more food in my water. So if I put something on and it's kind of like a dry brush stroke, then I really don't want it. You can very easily just take it out. Well, it's wet, you can take it out. Can you take it out when it's dry? Sometimes. But you can yeah, wet it you again, just, right? Uh, you can wet you it just again. it. more texture to your landscape, foreground, blend it in, 
Voilà. Voilà. Merci. Sign it. I usually sign, I think, in pencil, and you can stick it on your refrigerator. <laughs> 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 like the whole thing. Thank you very much. <laughs>